Sure, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Glenn, for your great presentation. We do have a number of questions here, and I'll get through them as best as I can. We have about 10 minutes or so that we can we can go ahead and answer some questions. So um, the first question that I got uh, re relates to soil quality. Do you think that the, the drag hose application um, and side dressing manure makes any difference on soil quality other than the chemical properties? Any different than any other time of year? I think the key part of the drag hose is to try to get the nitrogen on when the corn's going to grab it and use it. So that's why we go that route. There's no question, I think, that manure improves soil tilth. Um, the big, most of our farmers will tell you the biggest drawback of the manure usage over the years has been the soil compaction issues associated with it. So I think the soil, the, the drag hose um, will eliminate a lot of that issue. So I, you know, but we haven't really looked at any of the other soil qualities associated with this yet. All right, that's all right. Um, are there any problems with air quality concerns, primarily odor with the neighbors? I know you're injecting some of it, but you're broadcasting some of it. What kinds of things are you dealing with? Yep, we have uh, certainly have odor complaints. I think about 90% of all um, uh, manure odor complaints come at the application time. So our goal is to try to get it in the soil. And if we can get to the point where we can do the straight rows with the drag hose, uh, what we'd like to do is put um, saddle tanks on the manure applicator so that when they pick up the um, injection units on the end rows, uh, we'll divert the manure into those saddle tanks. And then uh, when we go back down the field with the injector back in the ground, we'll pump that manure back out. So we can't do it really with the angled rows simply because the rows get shorter. Pretty soon we don't have the time to pump the manure back out. But if we can get to the point where we can uh, do the straight rows, like with the Cadman system that we showed, uh, then I think the potential there would be that there would be no manure on top of the surface. Then you could put manure on fields that are much, much closer to housing developments, places like that. Okay. So you bring up the point of the angled rows. Uh, Doug asks what reason that drag hose operators actually apply at an angle. And I know I, I've heard the answer to this and I didn't think about it before, but it makes good sense. So go ahead and tell them how that works. Um, you know, it took a long time to get that through my head. Um, drag hoses will twist and drag hoses will get kinks in them and they'll pull apart and bad things happen uh, when you don't respect what the hose has to have. So on what the commercial applicators will tell you is that that they need the hose to uh, the, the poles to get shorter with each with each pass um, in a field, and they need not to get too much of a side angle on it. So that combination is what the drag hose people tell me they they uh, um, they have to avoid. So that's why they want the sh the rows to get shorter. Uh, perhaps down the road we can do it with longer ones. We've just never had a financial incentive to learn, but it's uh, it it. It took a while for me to, to grasp the concept as well. One of the other questions here, um, Jill asked if there if you'd measured any stand reduction. I think you had covered this a little bit already in your presentation, but she's wondering if you have measured the actual stand reduction because of the drag line. We in the wet year where we were scouring the soil when the when the corn was uh, just spiking at the application time. Uh, we did reduce the stand by about 3,000 plants per acre, but only on the row immediately beside the drag hose, not on any of the other rows in the field. Um, I've had a couple farmers who are toying with the idea of uh, of applying their manure at an angle, across, planting a field straight, planting a little bit heavy, and then injecting the manure at an angle, and just and just writing off some of the lost stand. And, and that's an interesting concept I'd never thought of that a farmer approached me with. But again, on the corn that's up at the V2, V3 stage, we've not had any uh, stand losses that we've been able to detect. Um, Rick Kelsch asks, uh, what availability are you assuming for the nitrogen in animal manure manures when you're comparing your nitrogen calculations? We, we kind of go at about a 90% rate uh, nitrogen's a tricky thing to get used to. Uh, some years, I know you could you could put a half rate of nitrogen on and get excellent yields, and other years, with all the rain, we uh, we'll probably wish we'd put more on. But we use I assume an availability of about 90 percent on our uh, on our nitrogen that we're getting in the hog manure, and uh, not nearly as much in the dairy manure, of course. But again, if you if you go back to that original um, table of our soil test. 
uh, we have total nitrogen, we have ammonium nitrogen, organic nitrogen, and then what they call available nitrogen, which is the ammonium plus a portion of the organic. So for us, uh, our labs say that half the organic nitrogen will be available for a corn crop because it's a long growing season. But I know for like wheat, you can never really count on any of the organic uh, nitrogen having time to mineralize and become available for the wheat crop in time to be used. All right. Uh, Carl asked, he was wondering whether he had misunderstood something. He said, was it mentioned that side dressing of liquid manure may help the crop with drought tolerance? Is this in addition to the fact that it's just applying some liquid or is there something more to that? Well, I think one of the biggest advantages uh, in a drought year, a lot of times the 28% uh, UAN that people apply uh, does not seem to get uh, to the roots of the corn. It doesn't get converted over by the bacteria and the corn doesn't seem to be able to uh, to reach it. So I think the liquid manure, because you're providing ammonium nitrogen and you're providing some moisture for the bacteria, uh, I, it seems to be that, that we uh, excel in dry years with our with our liquid manure application. Again, five or 6,000 gallons per acre is not a lot, but the fact that, you, that we are placing it in our small plots uh, four or five inches deep uh, seems to be better than, than getting a half inch rain on the corn. All right. And then the last question I have here right now, um, feel free to ask more questions if you guys have more questions, but the last question I had is how technology and precision application of manure would affect this drag hose system. Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for uh, variable rate application. Um, you know, the, the, the opportunity is coming down the road just as they do with dry fertilizer. Uh, for right now, most of our guys would probably speed up and slow down to get the variable rate. But I think as time goes on, we'll eventually tie in soil maps and yield maps with, with our manure application. And uh, whether we slow the pump or speed the pump, whether we slow or speed the tractor, I just don't know, but but that that's uh, you know someone younger than me is going to have to come along and and continue on this uh, precision uh, vein on uh, manure application. All right, all right. So Rick's question here is: Are you doing any of your field plots on neighboring crop farms that don't have any livestock? Um, and do you know what their re reservation for using manure is on those smaller farms? Great question. Um, and I think this is where uh, the side dress is really going to help us. Uh, right now, many of our non-livestock farmers, um, their attitude is, oh, yeah, you can put manure in my field, but, but I'm not going to pay for it. Or I'll only pay half of the application costs. Um, they, really don't, they, they really don't give a lot of credit to what manure can do. I think in a side-by-side, -side, if we were to drag hose the manure on the uh, emerged corn in a, in a nearby farmer's field, and leave some strips for him to compare that to his uh, 28. Uh, I think uh, two years out of three, the drag hose corn will look substantially better than the uh, than the 28 or the anhydrous ammonia. Now, anhydrous is still the king of nitrogen sources in our state, and it's hard to beat that. But I think the drag hose applied manure will probably be be uh, able to do that in the future as we get it a little more fine tuned than what we've done in the past. But I, that'll be the key. Remember that 40% of the NP and K value of that swine manure is in that nitrogen. If we can capture that, that'll, that'll wake up these, uh, these neighbors of livestock producers. All right. I will, again, thank you for joining us and answering all those questions.